Good evening. In my first discussion of impacts in human evolution, I covered the populating of Eurasia and Africa. In this evening's lecture, I am going to be going over to the peopling of the Americas. This is all very tentative. Nothing's written in stone here, but it's my best estimate and it's pretty much consistent with the data. Now, in here, we have a mastodon and a mammoth. The way I keep them straight is that the mammoth would eat leaves off the trees and the mastodons would eat the bushes. That's the way I keep them straight myself, and that may be completely wrong as well, based on their teeth patterns. But at any rate, about, say, 40,000 BC, the Meridian Corridor was open, and you, this is a uh, map of pre, what they'll call pre flooded sites now. But to get to these very early sites, man had to come through here significantly earlier. And that's the period when that corridor is open. My current work now is at C by the time of DNA. So you can see right here crossed over into the Americas at that point. It's the only way I can explain the southern distribution of C mitochondrial DNA. You can see it over here and then over here. Uh, that's pretty hard evidence and based on European experience, mitochondrial DNA is the only thing you can really track in it for human population movements. Why mitochondrial DNA is pretty much useless, as men will generally have sex with just about anything. Now, uh, a lot of you may be from Arizona, and you're familiar with the near Arizona impact. And the uh, are that that was of 10, net, 10 megatons of corn. Here's a picture of it. To give you an idea of the size of this thing, that little white dot down there is actually a house. To give you an idea of the kill zone for the meteor crater impact, the fireball extended out to 10 kilometers. And the infrared off of that would go on far further. They're estimating large animals killed or wounded up to 24 kilometers. And a hurricane winds up to 40 kilometers. Essentially, that was probably the kill zone, was that outer uh, ring right there. When you get right down to it, now, when an impactor impacts, it appears that some of the photons are accelerated to gamma ray radiation levels and split the neutrons of other atoms. These free neutrons lead to carbon-14 spikes. You can see the one from meteor crater over here. We have a variability, probably due to supernova, shows these curves. And then solar variability as well. Still in the process of working this all out. Now, besides uh, walking on land at this point, man had boats. This is a little drawing from a Spanish map of an Incan catamaran that the Spanish took over and used. It appears that man was in boats very early on. One of the interesting things is you can see this D mitochondrial DNA population showing up here in South America with, with regular intermediate. Now that is most likely indicative of direct transpacific contact. Now, besides that, we also have this B DNA that you see down here. And that is likely to have been for people following the kelp beds along. At this point, the Bering Strait is closed, and the Northern Pacific was much warmer than it is today. And so, again, you can see the beam mitochondria DNA coming along the coast. Now, this is the other opening of the corridor in the North America. This was when it came in North America. 
uh, what they'll call Clovis Earth's first hypothesis. And you can see that that doesn't really work to explain the data. This is a variant of Clovis Earth's hypothesis. But uh, I will point out the aim of the chondrial DNA coming over at this point, and that's highly likely. You can look at the A mitochondrial DNA, but you can see that it's just got the more northern distribution here of the A mitochondrial DNA. There's one population that was so wiped out over the millennia that they don't show up in the DNA mix. This is my director, he's of Akinashi's heritage. Uh, their male male adult height was about 5 feet. Uh, it's like that they came from North Africa, based upon later fishing boats being blown off course. They show up in South Africa about 35,000 BC and they migrate north, up into North America. One of their distinctive features in the culture of these council houses, which were adopted by other Native American peoples. This gives you a you can see the people inside. Essentially, it's a wooden cathedral. And so when you see the mentions of the council houses and colonial records, you know what they're talking about. It's also likely that those people brought up the fluted point technology, closed technology from South America. Close first appears upon the Gulf Coast and then spreads from there. And it's a technology that appears to have been about adopted by other peoples. Now I'm going to go back to the map of the NASA and give you some idea of scale. Here I am. It's not exactly an easy way to make a living. Now, it's been noted that there were monks in this area that contained large numbers of Macedon and Napalm women. It had been stated for some time that that had been due to impact. I will say that a lot of the radiocarbon dates for those creatures come to 10,800 BC, and there's good reasons for that. Now, when I did my book, we didn't have firm, reliable radiocarbon dates because of gamma ray destruction and impacts. And uh, Dr. Firestone and Dr. Kent. Here's Dr. Firestone. And here's Dr. Kent. Uh, managed to sort this out. I'll tell you, when I did the book, the, uh, the clothes materials were scattered from here to hell. I was dealing with dates as much as 7,000 years old. Due to the production of gamma rays, in high velocity impact, you can see the Marta 14 mark from throwing off all the radiocarbon dating. Now, if you'll notice, there's another spike right before that. That was likely from an impact on the A and I sheet, which is, was a Pitsoti impact, or Lloydminster is another way that it's commonly referred to. What happened in this case was the three or four miles of ice blown off the land underneath rose back up. So you have an inverted crater. And cell tower guy who spotted. Now the other one that we have, the one at 10,800, is this. And this is a current estimate of the, uh, the Younger Drives family impact here. There's several problems with this, but the impact dates run from here over to here. It's likely, a, from native accounts, it's likely to have been a tangential impact. And about 95% of the people in North America died in that event due to the climate collapse. All their food animals starved to death, and they starved to death. And here you can see a nice clear illustration of that impact by boundary. So now, if we actually look at the younger drives, it's over here. Uh, and there's a 
froze over dry ice, we have the malt water falls to 1A, which was that earlier slide that I showed you. And then we have the malt water falls to 1B over here, which is likely the second one, and the beginning of the melting of the ice sheet in general at that point. And you can see some of the exits that have been mapped for the meltwater from the glaciers. But you'll notice that these things are not smooth, they are sudden. This is not a continuous process, it's continuous. And these continuities are really important. Now, here we go. Here's the rise in the sea level. You see the meltwater pulse 1A, you see the meltwater. Younger dryas. In this one, the younger dryas is here, and there's the Mount Water Falls 1B. So, and if we look at the ages, we see that the younger dryas again does not correspond to the Mount Water Pulses, which were likely caused by the impacts. The global, and you see that this is global observed. Here's the, this is real hard data on this. Now, one of the important effects of this was the flooding, the rise in sea levels was a flooding of the Black Sea area. And all the dominant people that evolved on that area left. Not all of them, but a lot of them did. In North America, I believe that they were the ancestors of the Andes, known as the Susquehannocks to the Virginia colonists. You can see, looking at this map, that you have an X mitochondrial DNA with very peculiar mapping around the Black Sea and then into North America, right there. And that is likely to, that gene, mitochondrial DNA, is likely to have been brought over by the Red Tank Fleet, which is 8,050 BC, on the coast of Canada. Now, these skeletons had a prophetic, as they've been named as well. My friend Bernie. When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you are Anything your heart desires Will come to you Like a boat out of the blue Fake steps in and sees few through. Mama, when you wished upon the stars, 